A few little things we want to do this evening. And first of all, I would just like to say to all of you, and especially on behalf of Sandy and my wife, they do all this. They just put me up here to talk. That's, that's all I really do. But I can't remember a time we just, some of us talking earlier here in Elizabeth Town until back in the days when we opened this place in 1977. My brother and I did, if some of you don't know that. And this is the kind of turnouts we had all the time. And it just thrills me to see the enthusiasm and see everyone here dressed up and celebrating this occasion that Brent and a local, local young man has brought a business that can create this much interest in Hardin County, Kentucky. It's wonderful. So, I don't want to talk a lot. I just, I say, I welcome you here. We're so thankful that you're all here, and we appreciate it so much. And I just want to say, I know my wife has worked herself to death. I've had pneumonia for the last two weeks, and I haven't even seen her, but that's okay. The doctor took care of me, and she took care of the rest of her along with Sandy and Sandy's sister and so it's just been wonderful. But we have some other people that want to say a few words for us and uh, if I could ask if everybody just hold it down just a little little bit. We won't take long but I'd like to uh, call on our mayor, Miss Edna Berger, if you would like to say a couple words. I just want to say what a night and congratulations Brent. It's a great night for Elizabeth Town and I like Kenny. I remember 1977 and the big crowds here and how much fun and everybody all dressed up in it. It really is an exciting night for Elizabeth Town and for all of us and good luck to you. We wish you the best and you all have fun. Uh, Father Martin here, paging Father Martin. Well, Father Martin's not here, uh, he might come later, so we'll have the invocation at the end if we find Father Martin. Okay, uh, again, we want to thank you all for coming. This is a historic event. Uh, it is hosted by the legendary Stone Heart Restaurant. I'm so happy to be just a small part of this uh, wonderful family. Uh, our first speaker this evening is going to be... First of all, we'd like to have, before the speaker, we'd like to have a song. Uh, is Jenny Lynn here? I don't care. We're back here. Come here, Jenny Lynn. Everybody give Jenny Lynn a hand. This is Jenny Lynn from the historic Elizabethtown walking tour, and she is, uh, her, her real name is Jody Ingalls, and she's going to give us a beautiful song, America. Be known. 
brought a tear to my eye. I don't know about you all. Our next guest speaker is the Executive Director of Tourism here in Elizabethtown, Ms. Sherry Murphy. something we haven't been able to celebrate for over a hundred years, the legal production of bourbon in Hardin County. We wish you all the best. Tonight I offer appreciation and thanks from all the citizens of Hardin County to the Gooden family for yet another plank in our bridge of economic development in this community, another thread, if you will, in the fabric of our economic society here in Hardin County the legal production of bourbon. And so I bring to you tonight, for the Goodens, a proclamation on behalf of Hardin County. I thought about reading this for you tonight, but I know it's been a long evening and there's a lot of other speakers. And quite frankly, all of you have had a good opportunity to hear from me a lot in the last several weeks. <laughs> I'm sure you're tired of it. So with that, if Brent, if you come up, I'd like to officially declare today as Boundary Open Store Day. Well, that was pretty impressive, yes. Our next speaker is from the governor's office of our beloved state of Kentucky, Mr. Frank Smith. Thank you all and good evening. It is a real pleasure to be here on this historical occasion. And on behalf of the governor, I bring you greetings. And I would like to read to you a letter from the governor Greetings. As the Governor of the Commonwealth, I congratulate Brent and Melody Gooden on the official launch of the Boundary Oak Distillery. This revitalized facility, while enhancing the surrounding area, represents a small business success and symbolizes the rebirth of the bourbon industry in Hardin County. The first distillery in the county since the 1890s. The Gooden family has a long history in Kentucky and with that history comes tradition and the family's approach to distilling bourbon and moonshine. As a symbol of the family's commitment to history, the first barrel used in the production of Boundary Oak Kentucky Bourbon will be donated to the Hardin County History Museum. I applaud your commitment to economic development in the area, 
Kentucky looks forward to the benefits of business and commends the Boundary Oak Distillery for its role in today's market. Best wishes for your continued success. Sincerely, Stephen L. Bashir. Well, this next gentleman's going to have to top some other big things that have just happened, and I think he can. His name is Mr. Kenny Tab, and he is the Hardin County Court Clerk and also on the Board of Directors of the Hardin County Museum, Mr. Kenny Tab. Sandy, uh, on behalf of the uh, Board of Directors of Hardin County History Museum, it's quite an honor to be involved in this uh, historic event. Um, Rent, I want to thank you for um, donating the first bottle of Kentucky Moonshine to the History Museum. We have that on display. We're also very proud that you're going to donate the first barrel when it's empty to the Hardin County History Museum. We're very proud of the museum. Um, Hardin County Fiscal Court owns a building and supports us. The city of Elizabethtown supports us. And people like you, through your donations, support us. Uh, we opened in uh, 2003, and the place has really evolved over the years, and we're really surprised and proud of what has happened. So again, thank you for letting us uh, be a part of this tonight. And Brent, Melody, we wish you the best. Now, one of our very special guests is here from somewhere up north, and his name is Mr. Eric Gregory, and he is uh, the head of the Kentucky Distillers Association and with the Kentucky Bourbon Trail, Mr. Eric Gregory. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and we've been very fortunate in the bourbon industry in the past couple of years to attend a lot of uh, openings and launch parties, but I gotta say, this is the best one yet. So, y'all show yourselves your right heart and right as a um, And it's a shameless plug, I usually don't look this scruffy, um, but I'm raising money for the American Cancer Society, their No Shave November, uh, and our team name is Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskers. So, if you go on no-shave.org, yeah, Brent, you're looking good. Uh, <laughs> Uh, please uh, please join our team or donate. Uh, well, thank you all. As I said, I'm Eric Gregory. I'm president of the Kentucky Distillers Association, which has united, promoted, and protected our signature industry for 134 years. We all know that this is an exciting time to be in the bourbon industry, especially here at Boundary Oak, the city of Elizabethtown, and the greater Hardin County area. In the past few years, bourbon and bourbon-related jobs have doubled in the state of Kentucky. The number of distilleries has tripled in the state of Kentucky, and we have set major new benchmarks on salary, investment, tourism, tax revenue, and much more. Kentucky bourbon is now a $3 billion industry in the Commonwealth, responsible for more than 15,400 jobs, an annual payroll of $707 million, and $166 million a year and local and state tax revenue. And here's the best one yet. Now that you're listening to this, the average salary for a distillery employee in Kentucky is $91,188. These are the kind of good paying jobs that Brent and his team will be bringing here as they expand and grow. <laughs> we, <laughs> Bourbon has helped Kentucky weather the economic crisis in the past 10 years, as unfortunately Kentucky has lost about 26% of its manufacturing sector, bourbon has actually increased employment by 21%. Our exports are at record levels with more than $1 billion of Kentucky bourbon and Tennessee whiskey sent to 126 countries around the world. Our production has increased 150% in the last 15 years. Last year alone, our distilleries filled 1.2 million barrels of bourbon, which was our highest production year since 1970. In fact, we're sitting on the largest inventory of Kentucky bourbon right now since 1977. 
So that means that we have a million more barrels of bourbon in Kentucky than we have people living in Kentucky. And the governor likes to say there's one for every one of us and the rest of the country can have the rest. So to meet this growing global demand, bourbon is in its largest expansion phase since prohibition with more than $400 million invested in the last five years and another $630 million planned in the next five years. So over a 10 year span, including the great investment here at Boundary Oak, that's $1.3 billion for our distilleries in Kentucky. And part of this, yes, that's incredible. Part of this tremendous growth is due to our craft distilling industry, which we're here to showcase tonight. These artisan distillers are building the next generation of our legendary craft, and as we like to say, they're putting their money where their mash is. Our craft distillers employ 127 people right now in the Commonwealth, with salaries totaling $5 million. They've invested $30 million since 2008, and expect to invest another $30 million in the next five years. So make no mistake, our craft distillers are a vital and growing part of our future, and we must do more to make Kentucky more competitive and more attractive for them to here grow their business. And Brent, you've got our commitment on that. In addition, our Kentucky Bourbon Trail and our Kentucky Bourbon Trail Craft Tour, which we hope to welcome Brent to here soon, have grown from just simple visitors' experiences to worldwide iconic journeys with guests from all 50 states and more than 50 countries. So let me share with you just a couple of numbers when Brent joins our Kentucky Bourbon Trail Craft Tour of what the tourism is going to bring here to Hardin County. And I was a journalism major in college, so help me out here a second. More than 2.5 million people have visited a Kentucky Bourbon Trail or Kentucky Bourbon Trail Craft Distillery in the last five years, with last year more than 630,000 visitors alone. That includes 60,000 people to the Craft Trail in its first year of existence. 60,000 people have visited every distillery in Kentucky since we created our passport program in 2007. The average household income of a bourbon tourist, $95,800, with more than a third of our bourbon tourism above $100,000 household income. The average spend for a bourbon tourist coming to your community is $978. 90% of them are coming from outside Kentucky, and more than 70% of them came just to experience the Kentucky Bourbon Trail. And for if there's any hoteliers in the room, listen to this. 75% of them stayed in a hotel or bed and breakfast, 63% stayed three or more days, and 40% had more than three people in their group. Bottom line, the combination of the Boundary Oak Distillery and the Kentucky Bourbon Trail Craft Tour is going to be a grand slam for Hardin County. These are year-round visitors coming in packs from all around the world, ready to spend, who will be eating in your restaurants, sleeping in your hotels for days, and shopping in your stores. They are literally pouring into Kentucky, sorry, I had to say that, for a premium bourbon experience, and the beauty, charm, and hospitality of Elizabethtown and this new distillery will make it the perfect place to start or finish your Kentucky Bourbon Trail adventure. Brent, you and your team have done an incredible job with this new distillery. We are grateful to you and Boundary Oak for your tremendous commitment, your invest investment, and your passion for our timeless craft. So on behalf of the Kentucky Distillers Association and our 26 member distilleries, please let me say welcome to the KDA and the Commonwealth Signature Distilling Family. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, I think it is now time to meet the family that's making all this possible. Uh, we have the sole owners of the Boundary Oak Distillery here, of course, with us. Uh, the names are Brent Gooden, as we all know, and his wife, Melody Scott Gooden. And I have to look at my notes to make sure I have their children. We have Miles Goodman. <laughs> She has to look too. <laughs> Samuel Gooden and Thomas Gooden. Now I understand that Thomas Gooden was the visionary that made this all possible. Uh, Brent will tell the story better than I can, but it all started with Thomas. So Brent, Mike is yours. Holy cow. I didn't expect this many people. We thought maybe 50 would show up. 
I think there's more than 50, and I think 300 still tried to get in. So I was telling people, I think I pissed off 300 people. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing. In the political world, that's probably not good. Thank you all so much for coming. It's I'm just overwhelmed. I, I don't even have any words to, to say. Usually that's unusual for me, but... Uh, I'm just overwhelmed by your all support and really this isn't necessarily about me and my distillery This is really about our heritage. This is about Kentucky Everybody in this room is is, is in love with Kentucky and in love with how the world sees us and, and bourbon is that uh, Usually you and anywhere you go in the world is Kentucky bourbon that you hear and so uh, I feel blessed to be a part of that and I feel blessed that all of you all came and are in it and are a part of that with us and, and that's how I see it. Without this group and all these people, this wouldn't happen. And so I, I thank every one of you all. Every I can't t thank you enough. And, and my family, uh, they've been with me the whole time. When, I, when my young son Thomas decided he thought we should be in the distilling business, he wanted to go down over the hill to our spring and make liquor. And I said, son, that's illegal. We'll go to jail. <laughs> so he, I told him, I said, I tell you what, I'll make you a deal. We will, tr we will go as far as we can with this until someone says no, and no one ever said no, so here we are tonight. Now, I wish I had a better story than that. Uh, a little more romantic, there's no illegalness to it, but uh, it was a prevention of illegal liquor, so to speak. So thank you all for coming. Please stay. Please come sign our barrel. I, I feel blessed to have you all here. And again, thank you, and thank all of our speakers, Eric Gregory with the Kentucky Distillers Association. He's... It's a blessing to have this guy here. They, he's, he represents all of bourbon in the state, and that's, that's great. And the, and the governor's office, Frank and, and Harry and, and Edna, thank you all. And please stay and enjoy the night. Thank you. We now have a song by Mr. Larry Bush. Are you in the building? This is Larry Bush. He's going to sing America the Beautiful. Aren't you, Larry? Did they just sing that Yeah. Well, why don't you sing something else patriotic? God bless America. There you go. That was thank you. Okay. Make sure I have the right idea. words. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains, through the prairies. To the ocean, okay. white with home. God bless America, my home, sweet home. And God bless Harbor County. Well, the night won't be complete until we have our Kentucky song. Is Stephen Foster in the building? Here he comes, Stephen Foster. We gotta do the Kentucky song and then we'll have it all wrapped up. Doesn't he sound better than Kate Smith? <laughs> <laughs> the sun shines bright on my old Kentucky home. Tis summer, the children are gay. The corn tops ripe and the meadows in the bloom, while the birds make music all the day. The young folks roll on the little cabin floor, all merry, all happy and bright. By and by, hard times come a knocking at my door. And my old Kentucky home, good night. Weep no more, my lady. Oh, weep no more today. We will sing one 
Stone.